I have something for you. It stems from the water virtue. I attribute this build to the simple but profound phrase first spoken by the late great Bruce Lee, be like water. Through his amazing style known as Jeet Kune Do, he explains it in this way. It consists of physical techniques and applied philosophies that requires the individual to train him or herself to their most cultivated state of beingness so that when faced with a combat situation or a challenging personal situation, the tools needed are available in the moment and can be executed without thinking. The seamless movement and paralyzing damage you can inflict on an enemy is unparalleled. I'm done talking. Let's get into this. At first, I wasn't into the dual wielding swords, but this build just kept getting better and better as I continued to play it. It is a multifaceted build in every sense of the word. First of all, I've always wanted to figure out a way to have a build with a very powerful bow with unlimited arrows. Yeah, I said it. Because in Wolong, I would look at the maximum amount of arrows you can get which is 10 and sometimes 12 in certain cases and get discouraged like what's the point that's not enough arrows why can't I hold more but <laughs> with this water build it's the way to go it's how I'm able to have unlimited arrows and a very strong bow this virtue is best for how easily enemies can detect you or not and the amount of spirit consumed when deflecting stealth is a vital stat in Wolong and the water virtue will give you tons of it by default and this is where it starts when it comes to the bow as I said I've actually been having so much fun with this, toying with my opponents by becoming a phantom archer with the swag of Sub-Zero at times. I feel untouchable with the ability to strike devastating blows to the enemy. Now if you're enjoying Wolong like me, then like the video. Also subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Okay, this build went through a lot of changes because I like the idea of having luck with a build like this. I don't know, it just feels right. And I actually just started my NG Plus playthrough and got a mythic sky piercer from killing Zuyan. And let me just say something real quick. I was so wrong about Lubu's weapon. It is absolutely broken. <laughs> and I have an NG Plus build in the works coming soon. Anyways, back to business. The purpose of this water build is to be a silent assassin that can fight close or long range. And to express to you how powerful this build is. I've been playing in NG Plus with no mythic level gear or weapons, all 4 star, and been having no problems at all. Because when you're an assassin, you can almost one kill anybody. Just look how I sneak up on these enemies and some of them have a way higher morale than I do. But with this build, it doesn't matter. This is due to the stealth I have natively from the water virtue and the amount that I have embedded in my gear. This allows me to roam the battlefield almost undetectable and gives me a very small window to perform a deadly strike. Speaking of which, this is also how I'm able to get unlimited arrows for my bow. Let's start with that. At the moment, I'm using Sun Quan's Tiger Hunting Bow. It only has B scaling, which is kind of bad at the moment, but I'm farming for a better one, but it still hits like a truck. This is the beginning of how I get unlimited arrows. As you can see, it says 5.2% ammo retrieval upon range attack with range attack damage, luck, and ice power. I'll show you the stats on everything afterwards, but that's not the main reason for getting more arrows. On my gear, 
there's a special effect that replenishes one ammo per fatal strike and with this build I'm doing that all the time. So every encounter with the enemy I have a fresh set of arrows. <laughs> this also has range attack power, luck and ice power. It's the Young Conqueror's bandana. But for my chest armor I had to go with the entertainer's garb. Its main special effect is luck with everything else that the other pieces have. I just added chill accumulation on enemies. I don't need much. It is important though, since I have ice enchant on the weapon I'm using, the mounted banded scimitars with A plus damage scaling. These attacks are already insanely fast, but with haste upon martial arts, I move like a literal ninja. <laughs> this is crazy, man. And the enemy barely has a chance to hit me while I'm attacking, so the ice accumulation is really fast, which is why I don't need that much on my gear. And I love the one martial art this has called Plum Rend. You basically flip over the opponent, slicing them from above with both weapons. For some reason this deals insane damage, and it keeps you out of danger, especially you being less tanky than other builds. You want to be shifty. The other one is okay at best. It's called Waving Willow, which I don't use much at all. It can get you killed. But this is why I need a better set of these mounted bandit scimitars. I'm hunting currently for those five star. Once again, on the bracers, the only thing new here aside from the other gear is the fatal strike damage. It's very good on an assassin build like this. Same with the pants. And as you can see, I have a random array of gear here, but it all does everything I need it to do. But let me tell you something fam and i found this out after embedding everything here i didn't realize that the blue eyed gear it's the armor that sun Quan uses is basically catered and is made for the bow and arrow i already have the tiger hunting bow but the set bonus that the gear gives you is mind-blowing for one piece you get an extra two arrows then more for armor retrieval for a two piece the three piece reduces martial arts consumption and four pieces gives you more melee attack damage but get this for the five piece, you get damage amplification upon ranged attacks. Do you know how crazy this is? I don't even think this is a regular embedment. I think this is exclusively for the Sun Quan set because I haven't seen it anywhere besides this, but this is insane. This means that by just hitting an enemy with an arrow, your damage is amplified by 50%. I will be for sure embedding this gear and it will be my main armor that I use for this build. But it doesn't stop there fam. The wizardry spells I'm using will increase these even more. Amplified damage from the flame virtue is perfect for this. I activate it just before pulling out my bow for some broken bow damage. So this playstyle really pushes the versatility needle to the max. For the other spells I used aqua blink. You saw how I was like a phantom archer in the gameplay from the beginning right? Yeah, this just adds on to that ninja mentality I have when playing this build. Next I have Frozen Spear Trap and it's great for zoning enemies who like to stay on you. It deals some decent damage but I mainly use it for utility. Now this final one is the one I use the most, Frost Lance. It costs no morale to use, very little spirit and you could spam these plus it follows the enemy. They deal almost the same amount of damage that your basic attack deals while causing ice buildup. With how fast I attack in this build, I'm almost always in the positive. And let me show you my point allocation. It's 99 in water with just what I need for amplified damage with eight points. I will increase the flame virtue more as I continue to upgrade with this build, just so you know. Here's the Divine Beast. I love this one. It's called Baze or Baze if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Look at how much damage I dealt to Zhang Bao. You know I had to cool him down a bit, right, since he uses that fire. Oh, and I almost forgot. And I'll show you the stats after I tell you this. Did you know that you can get even more stats that you may need to give you an edge in your builds with these accessories? More ice attack power, more luck, whatever you need. Just cycle through the ones that you have to see what fits your needs. I'll show you the stats now. Ice attack power, well over 100%. 12% fatal strike damage, which is very strong. 9% range attack damage and I have 10.4% ammo retrieval upon range attacks. Now you can see all the stats on here and see how amazing this build is. <laughs> and boy oh boy, do you see that luck? Almost 200% like I said, as soon as I started playing NG+, I got two mythic drops. Now I see on YouTube they have these videos talking about how you can get unlimited 5 star mythic but I'm enjoying playing the game and just getting it as random drops from bosses and enemies it's, it's pretty exciting that way. I want to see how the luck works when I have it on the build and this build is only going to get better fam. I just started my NG Plus playthrough and I foresee overpowering builds going forward. 
I appreciate you watching to the end and if this build helped you out in any way then don't hesitate to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Also don't forget to express down below what you think of this build. Anything you think I can improve on and just tell me what ice builds or water builds you've made so far. I'll catch you in the next one. Be right out. Cheese, yo man, get it, no cheese in the club. We throw cheese that can blue hunters with more. I'm getting cake, baby. I'm serious. It's not a game.